Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Son of a Mountain. Thank y'all so much for tuning in today. Today's video is a much overdue uh, video update on my 2008 Toyota Yaris. So when it came to my cooking setup, uh, you know, I went through a couple of phases here, a couple of different setups until I found the one that works out for me. This setup here uh, worked out for me great because uh, on a windy day, I can take this uh, computer monitor mount, uh, which has like, a, I think, a 50 pound or 60, 60 pound limit of how much weight it can hold. I can unscrew it from the floor where where the car seat, you know, used to be bolted down to. I can unscrew it from there and then I can put it in the back of the car uh, there in, in near the hatch in the, in the rear end of the car. Uh, and I can set up my table that I made for it and cook outdoors and it's really such a simple process uh you know i found this uh, monitor stand you can buy them anywhere and it's literally just a monitor uh stand for a computer screen um and they can hold quite a bit of weight because those screens sometimes can get quite heavy and i can unscrew it from here and have it in the you know in the back of the car and on crappy windy weather days i can do the vice versa and and put it in here inside of the car and it's quite handy i can um you know i can adjust the height on it and i can swivel it swivel it back this way and you know back and forth i can be sitting on my bed and and cook i can be sitting on the driver's seat and cook you know i can take it out from here and put it in the back and sit in the back of the car and do the same thing so that's worked out for me i really love this setup and as i mentioned before i went to a couple of setups uh and this is the one my favorite because it's the most simplest uh easiest effective most effective for me with this vehicle so um when it's uh, super windy and the weather sucks, I have to get inside the car. So, uh, I'm gonna do, okay, this thing can move in whatever direction really I want. And I could also adjust the height up and down um, and then I turn this sucker on and I can cook right from in here. I crack down the window uh, and I turn on my fan for some circulation, obviously, and it works out great. So, yeah, um, on, the, on my previous videos, I had, uh, I believe it was like a two inch foam, memory foam mattress. And that got uncomfortable, like, after two months of sleeping on that thing. I couldn't take it anymore. I was like, oh, yeah, no. So I splurged myself. <laughs> and I, I went out, <clears throat> excuse me, and I bought an 8-inch uh, memory foam mattress. And unfortunately, uh, you know, I had no choice. But I had to cut it to make it fit uh, inside my vehicle. And it's actually pretty damn comfortable um and i have not had a bad night's sleep due to uh you know uncomfortable mattress so i'm gonna get in here and show you guys how i lay down this thing so when i'm you know when i'm laying down that's pretty much it's pretty much my view right here you know i can look over this way beautiful views wake up in the morning yada 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 my feet does hang out a little bit that was something uh, my feet does hang out 
of the bed, but not by much. Uh, you know, if I'm laying down like uh, like sideways, I can like curl up my legs and then it will be in here. But I have no issues, man. I mean, like I said, for me, this has worked out perfectly. So I wake up. Oh, what a beautiful day outside. Make my coffee. Actually, most of the time I, I bring my coffee brewed. So all I do is throw some in here, heat it up, you know, put my frying pan up here, uh, make some breakfast. Food's right there. Water's right there. Cooking pots, <clears throat> kitchen stuff is right here. So, and then I turn on the fan uh, for some circulation. <clears throat> it worked out great for me. And I'm super happy with it. Now, <clears throat> with the mattress, I had to kind of fold it a little bit <clears throat> because back here, I did sacrifice a little bit even more space because back here, I, uh, I put a full-size spare tire and I will show you guys in a minute. And I had to do that. I had to... Uh, a full-size spare tire in here because the regular you know little tires were just not uh regular spare tires were just not doing it so yeah uh this is the view from back here uh there's the beds actually quite spacious you know and very comfortable so uh what i had to do here because i wanted a full-size spare tire which you see right here okay i had to wrap it in plastic and all that because of the smell obviously and that's actually helped i don't smell this smelly tire anymore so i didn't uh, on a previous video i had talked about how i wanted to you know put it up here the roof basket and plus the the spare tire full-size spare but that turned out to be more of a hassle than anything because uh going down washboard roads was a lot of vibrations going on up top and also you know uh i didn't like it up there because um it was creating a lot of wind drag which is something you know a big issue with these tiny cars but there was ways around it so sat for a while and thought about how i was going to you know add uh, a full-size spare tire because they don't fit down here where the original um, donut uh, spare tire goes there's a lid under here so I took the 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 little you know puny tire spare tire that was down here and I chucked that threw it out and I used the space down there for recovery gear and up here you know I said well I'm gonna to have to sacrifice some of my sleeping arrangements here, my sleeping quarters. So there's enough space here for me to sleep either sideways or you know on my back or whatever. And that's been working out fine. I had to fold the mattress literally because I didn't want to cut the mattress and then sleep next to a tire. <laughs> so I created kind of like a little wall with the with with the mattress itself. I've mattress fold it like this um and then i put like a, a plastic uh you know divider thick tough material here to separate support the mattress and also you know keep that spare tire uh nice and steady in there and that's worked out perfect uh worked out perfect for me because now i have a full size spare and i don't have to worry about you know getting a flat in a place like this and then having to you know uh limp my way home with a little donut tire that might just fail on me anyway uh so that's worked out perfect so with the space i had down here i got my recovery gear what recovery gear am i referring to so in there i have some snow chain um you know for my tires I have, you know, those, uh, in case I get stuck in the dirt and the mud, I have 
these, uh, I forget what the hell they're called, but basically uh, they create better traction. You put them under your tire, uh, you know, and haul ass basically. So I got two of these down here. I have a battery jumper, uh, power bank jumper. These things are awesome for you guys that like to do this kind of stuff. You don't have to bring jumper cables. It's literally a battery with tiny jumper cables attached to it. it like a power bank. You recharge at home and then, you know, if your car needs a jump or if one of your friends needs a jump, this thing has come in handy two times already. Saved my butt. So I forgot the lights on and the headlights on one time, a couple of times. And if it wasn't for this thing, I would have been stranded for days. So it helped me out. Also in here somewhere, I have, oh, there it is. I have an air pump and, you know, some um, uh, tire patch kits in there. And, you know, the regular stuff if you're doing these kind of things, coming out to places like this. Why don't YouTube look at all these you know, uh, do-it-yourself solutions, <laughs> and I see these these dudes that had uh, taken stop signs uh, and turned them into skid plates. So don't worry, I didn't steal this from any. You know, you can buy these on Amazon. I bought this one for twenty bucks. So it's a, I believe this is a four millimeter thick something like that and as you can see I don't know if you can see right there was there's a bit of screw the screws are sticking out I'm finding the mounting points is not difficult guys okay uh, over here under the bumper uh, in the, or under the radiator there's a there's a metal mount that runs under here and there's plenty of mounting uh, points there. And then over there where you see those two screws sticking out, you know, those holes are already there. I didn't have to drill anything. All these holes were already here. So that helped out, uh, especially as I mentioned before, as I'm going down, uh, as I'm going down uh, roads that have a lot of you know, brushes or bush or tr little trees that are like right in the middle of the road like this. And there's a lot of scraping involved and right where the oil pan and, you know, all the important components are at. This kid plate <laughs> has taken a beating already. I, I use it for the past year. It has not let me down. It hasn't broken nothing. Everything's great. It's worked out. It was a cheap and effective solution. I have a review video on this, but uh, for my power source, I do use a 28 watt solar panel, folding solar panel. I do have a review on this, and uh, this thing is awesome. You know, it's probably one of the most useful tools I have on this vehicle uh, currently. Uh, Currently, I'm getting a little bit of a charge here. I don't know. What does that say? 1.3. Not a whole lot. It's a bit cloudy today. Uh, but I'm still getting some kind of charging going on. Um, my favorite part about it is I, this thing provides, helps me stay warm, uh, you know, during cold nights or winter. Because I use this to power up. Uh, to charge my power banks and I use my power banks to uh, power up my heated vest my heated jacket uh, and that's how I've been staying warm that's the source of my heat so let's go inside and I can show you and here's my power bank it is currently charging okay and this is my heated vest I also have a a review on this thing uh it's been working out great you know like terrific man i have it on a hanger hanging there um and when it gets super cold i just throw a 
just put on a, a power bank, plug it in. I turn it on and that's it. And I don't need a generator. I don't need to turn on my car a million times. And so, no, it works out perfectly. Well, also on my first video, I talked about uh, how I was trying to get some kind of lift on this thing. Just even an inch or two, nothing crazy. Um, I wanted something that was super simple to do. I'm not a mechanic and I didn't want a huge production really like I didn't want a giant project out of this so I did a whole lot of whole lot of researching and I found these things called uh, uh, strut buffers and they're basically and I'll show you a picture right here they're basically like these rubber uh, pads that go in between the space of your strut uh, it, it provided uh, a lot of uh, support when it, a lot of support when it, when it came to bumpy roads. You see it. So as the car bounces up and down, that uh, absorbs a lot of the the shaking around, and um, it also you know made the made the the strut uh, on the springs itself stretch out. You know like. It definitely helped and it also made for such a much more comfortable ride going down washboard roads. So real quick, um, one thing that I did do under the hood of this car was make my own air intake, okay? It goes directly to the filter air box. So I didn't, I didn't change any of the the air filter setup all i did is i i, I wanted better uh, fuel economy I, i'm not doing this for for racing or you know any kind of power gain but i did want to improve my gas mileage so i didn't want to buy one of those you know little ricer uh air intakes with the filter and all that i didn't want to touch or modify anything here uh, mass mass airflow sensor i didn't want to mess with any of that so i left the air box as is and i and i bought a um four inch air duct that expands and this is made, you know, again, marine grade. I had no issues with heat, nothing like that. It doesn't melt. I did go ahead and add uh, heat deflectors, okay? And since I already have the filter here, I didn't have to worry about adding a filter outside of it. So it runs directly out and I want air directly from the outside of the car. And it's very incognito. I mean, you can't really see it, but it's right here. Uh, and the air goes in through here. No problem. I do have a waterproof uh, filter uh, mesh. It's super thin. It's actually made for this kind of stuff. And um, again, never had any issues with um, water getting in never had any issues with the car overheating or anything like that um but i guess the point of the story is point of this is did it improve my gas mileage it did it improved my gas mileage by a whole lot you know it's taking air directly from outside not from the hot engine in here and is leading it through uh it's force feeding colder air into the air box into the engine so that actually did improve my my gas mileage um super simple you know uh, four inch air duct directly to the air box i went ahead and removed the light bars and the light bar and the spotlight from the license plate mount and I put it right here where you, where you see. And I, I kind of tilted the spotlights to the side a little bit. Um, 
also added one of these uh, for you know in case I get stuck somewhere uh, somebody can help me can, you know tow me out of a maybe a, a sandy or muddy situation um, so far I haven't had that issue so I hope that this video was helpful to anyone out there that's trying to modify their vehicle into a camper uh, all the stuff I did to this car was not difficult at all you know all the stuff anyone can do this and and you can do it to any vehicle you know if I did it if I'm doing this with the Toyota Yaris and I managed to do this with minimal mechanic mechanical uh, or engineering experience right then anyone can do it with any vehicle i think the hardest part about uh all this is committing to the decision and following through with it because you know there's a lot of things you have to do to the vehicle to change it and some things are unreversible and you cannot change after you made that decision so the hardest part is making the full commitment and you know uh, arranging a plan and sticking with it and going all the way through with it so that all depends how much you love to do these kind of things i personally am never going to change my vehicle back to normal I'm, this vehicle is never going back to uh, you know sitting four people it's never going back to regular size rims and it's never gonna this is what i wanted this was a decision that i that i decided you know two years ago so uh once I committed to it, once you're committed to it, that you have to follow through and stick to stick to that, you know, and that's the hardest part about all this. Um, I personally love it. Uh, to me, uh, the experience and the memories I get out of it is far more worth than a vehicle, uh, you know, material presence, material value. So to me, being out and doing these kind, of, these kind of things and having these kind of memories and experience is, is worth more than gold to me. So I had no issues with it. I'll drill holes. I'll fucking do, excuse my language, I'll do whatever it takes uh, because I love doing this kind of stuff. And that's what you got to ask yourself when you do these kind of things. Am I fully committed to it? If you have any questions of anything I did here, if you have any questions, any suggestions of you know of anything i can improve on this vehicle if you have any new ideas or anything that uh you know maybe i should do to this car uh, let me know comment down below also uh you know if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do i you know i do these kind of videos all the time uh share like uh follow me on instagram i'm i'm on instagram too uh son of a mountain um, I'm on Instagram so follow me on there I'm also on Twitter so you guys with all that being done and said thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll catch you on the next one